Let's dive into the details of what we know so far with the three future weapons programs that will eventually replace the 5.56 M16 family of weapons. We found some new, incredible animations from the inner workings of the Textron bid, created from their rifle patent plants. I did all the research and consolidated it here for you. I'm Chris Cappy, former Army veteran, and this is Task and Gear. Here's the big takeaway. The new round will be slightly heavier, fly at a faster velocity, and if all goes according to plan, it will allow troops to engage the enemy at greater distances with more lethality. Of the original companies in the running for the bid, only three remain, Six Hour, General Dynamics, and Textron. The losers who were tossed out of the running in September are FN America and PCP Tactical. Better luck next time in 60 years when the military is looking for a new, new, next, next generation weapon. Each one of the bids is made up of three different weapon systems. We have a replacement for the M16 carbine, a replacement for the M249 saw, and last but not least, a replacement for the 7.62 firing M240 Lima. And that's the artist formerly known as the M240 Bravo if you come from my era. The first two are 6.8 millimeter firing and the last is a 338 Norma Magnum, which is a step up from the 7.62. First up is the Textron bid. I do like a lot of things about this bid. It weighs less, the ammo weighs less. Beautiful looking piece of weaponry. There are some high speed advances here with an electric mechanical trigger. The spent casing is brought down and ejected while the fresh round is brought up, opposed to a conventional firearm where the round is brought directly from the magazine into the chamber and then ejected straight from there. This appears to have been added as a few extra steps and I would be curious about the rate of fire with this. Does that extra movement slow it down at all? Let's put this side by side with what we're replacing. The old M16. Look at how different this works on the inside. It looks like an alien compared to the M16. The charging handle is moved from its usual position to the front of the weapon. You have to move the bolt to the rear by doing this instead of this. I think I'll need a six hour briefing on how to operate this thing. I'm sure the army will come up with one. In the firing mechanism, we have a lot more moving parts than usual going on within the guts of the weapon. The reason for complex systems probably has something to do with the caseless telescope ammo that it fires. So I don't want to be a grandpa here saying, look at this weapon, it's too damn complicated. But it looks complicated. Cleaning that thing looks like it'd be an absolute nightmare. Guys, Q-tips boxes only come in 1,000, and it looks like I'd need a solid 15,000 Q-tips to clean the sand out of that thing. To be fair, complexity can sometimes equal better. Other times, it means Joe will be able to destroy the thing very quickly by dropping it because it's too delicate of a flower for him to be trampling on. I've seen Joe destroy just about everything you can think of with the back of a striker ramp. Kevlar's, weapons, crushed. Not that having a less complicating firing mechanism would save it from being crushed by the ramp of a striker, so that might be a bad analogy. With this bid, we're using caseless telescope plastic rounds. That'll save you about 40% in ammo weight, but I'm heavily skeptical about the reliability of the plastic ammo. The new design, they claim, will not fold under heat, but that's yet to be seen. The carbine is similar to the M16 family in terms of the look and feel of the weapon. The problem I'm having though is getting past the strange bulkiness. When I first looked at the rifle, I couldn't understand why it looked bulky, but it's because there's a lot going on on the inside as seen in the animation. Just because something lighter doesn't mean it's easier to use though. First thing I can think of is how annoying it would be to mount your PEC-15, your optics, your flashlight, all your cool guy gear on there, and then you try to sit in an MRAP or a striker Good luck fitting in a vehicle or easily getting yourself unstuck from every wire in there while you trip over yourself. Then you get out only to get back in a minute later. Hurry up and wait. Before we tap the Sig Sauer bid, I want everyone to keep in mind that this is technically not an official replacement for the 5.56 M16, not yet anyway. The plan here is for the Army to procure 100,000 of the new weapon system from one of these three prototypes by 2022, and they're gonna be seeing how it works before getting married to it. The Army's last relationship with the weapon was like 60 years long, so you can understand that it's difficult for them to do a change like that. Even though I know they've been seeing other weapons on the side for years. I'm looking at you, FN Scar, your home wrecker. Why are they doing this? In 2010, Congress initiated an investigation of the performance of the M4. It's pros, it's cons, and if they had a reason to replace it. A summary of the report says that while there may have been concerns raised by some of the M4's reliability and lethality, studies suggest that the M4 is performing well and is viewed favorably by the users. However, the Army is undertaking the individual carbine competition to conduct an open competition among small arms manufacturers for follow-up weapons. The small arms capability-based assessment found that many of the problems facing the M4 were solved by changing to a different improved ammo type, better optics, and more reliable magazines. 
It's true that many feed issues with the M4 can be traced to unreliable magazines. However, even though the M4 has a lot of love for it among all branches, the military is looking to replace it, have overmatched capabilities going into the future. The weapons development program will cost 10 million the first year and an estimated 150 million a year after that. The rifles need to be able to deliver both a high pressure test round loaded 20% higher than normal pressure. And this is so that they can stress the rifle barrel and breach during firing. Apparently, it said somewhere in the contract to make sure the suppressor looks like a Coke bottle stuck on the end of your rifle too. Thanks, General Dynamics. Before we go into the six hour bid, real quick, please remember to subscribe to our channel so we can see each other again. We do rundowns like this every week. Now, let's go to everyone's favorite bid, Sig Sauer. The M68 from them is the M249 replacement. It's fully auto, belt fed from a 200 round drum. This submission admittedly won my heart. Two things stuck out to me, the reciprocating barrel design and the new optic. The barrel will now move with each shot to balance out the recoil forces. This has pros and cons. The weapon is more accurate, but it has a slower rate of fire. If you ask me, those are actually both positives because you don't need a higher rate of fire if you're putting accurate rounds down range. The bid, at its core, is about the new advanced ammo and the energy it brings to the table. The proprietary new round is a steel slash brass hybrid instead of the plastic cased ammo that the other companies are bringing to the table. The base of the ammo where the primary is struck is made of steel. This allows it to be more reliable with a higher lethality. The energy can be increased dramatically because of the steel base. The rest of the ammo is made of a standard brass with a clip inside to connect the two. SIG claims the energy is increased by a factor of 50 to 60% while reducing the weight by 20%. The machine gun has for too long been too heavy. Comment below if you think I'm a spaghetti armed weakling. I'm Italian, I can say that. Now this new M68 machine gun is 12 pounds while still reducing the level of recoil closer to an M16. Six Hour has not mentioned the recoil on the carbine version or if it's reliable enough to reduce recoil effectively with the 6.8 millimeter round. Another advantage that this weapon has is the ergonomics are the most similar to all the bids with the M16, which would mean less of a shock to Joe when he picks it up from his supply sergeant for the first time. We all know Joe, he would pick up the bullpup rifle and not know which way to point the barrel for at least a few years. The new optic from Sig Sauer that comes along with these weapons have some really impressive capabilities. Up to 1,200 meters out with the 338 machine gun, you can first laze the target and the system will put the first round on target after that. The military has held the position that they would not replace their current weapons until there was a significant enough leap in technology to justify the massive cost of replacing all the weapons. I think that these bids are getting closer and closer to that point. Sig Sauer worked up a replacement for the M240 as well, the number one feature of the replacement is the 338 round. And I guess that they figured it wasn't fair to up the firepower of the 556 to 68 and then not replace the 762 with an upped 338, which falls somewhere between the 762 and the 50 cal. This prototype, while firing a larger round, still only weighs 19 pounds. This is a very exciting update. The energy on target is similar to a 50 cal. Last but not least is the General Dynamics bid. New 6.8 millimeter next generation squad weapon, or NGSW. Not to be confused with NSFW, which my coworkers are constantly telling me to stop looking at. What I do on my lunch hour is my own business is significantly different than the others. They're going for a bullpup design with their weapon, and I know that there's a lot of hate for the European bullpup design, especially because word on the street is the British and everyone else who fields the bullpup do not like the awkward reload because the magazine is behind the pistol grip in the rear, which makes reloading while laying down a hassle. Seriously, I have to have the magazine stuck up in my armpit? We're gonna have a bunch of troops with stinky magazines. Is that really what you want? I'll just do what I always do and spray it with Axe Body Spray, the old G.I. Joe shower. With this design, it means a longer barrel while still having a shorter length in overall for the rifle because firing mechanism has been moved to the rear of the rifle near the buttstock, right where you place your face, which isn't fun to be firing the rounds when they're going off right next to your face with this different design. They're going with an entirely polymer case for their ammo as opposed to the steel base or telescoped ammo. So each developer is coming to the plate with a different style of ammo entirely. The polymer ammo is developed separately from General Dynamics in a partnership with True Velocity Ammo. The ammo looks great. It saves weight. It absolutely is revolutionary. This makes the decision even harder because all the weapons have their pros and their cons. Some save more weight in ammo or save more weight with the rifle. 
since the Army usually plays a relatively safe game, I would be surprised if they went with something that is so untested as the caseless ammo, but I'm sure they'll be tempted to go with it because of the huge reduction in weight. Which development bid do you like the best? Which design do you think will win out with the all-seeing, all-knowing Army top brass? We'll have to wait and see which old skull and bones friend they decide to throw the procurement money to. I'm Chris Cappy. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe if you like the video or if you don't like our content. Subscribe so you can put a video on in the background while you're doing something much better.